Thank you for watching today's devotionable. These are brief devotions for busy people. I want to show you uh, three pictures, and uh, hopefully you'll know who all of these individuals are, uh, but let's just see how culturally aware you are. All right, here's the first photo. Do you know who this is? Hopefully you do. This is Taylor Swift, one of the most famous singers uh, in the world today. All right, here's our, our second picture. You recognize these, uh, these fellows? This is Dude Perfect. If you're on YouTube much, maybe you've seen uh, them and their trick shots. Uh, but really famous guys, very creative uh, and uh, very popular. Now, maybe the most famous of the three, arguably, is this guy right here. Now, some of you may not know who this is, uh, but this guy owns the most popular uh, YouTube channel in the world. His name is Mr. Beast. If you've never seen Mr. Beast, uh, Google it, check it out. Uh, very interesting. But these three individuals or these three groups of people, uh, they have, all have something in common. And that is the fact that they are super creative people. And I think when we see people being so creative like this, it, it, as Christians, it, it lets us to know that it makes sense because they were created by a, a super creative God. And the question today that I, I want to pose to you is we're going to be looking at Acts, or excuse me, at, uh, at Exodus 31. The question I want to pose to you is, are you using your creativity for God's glory and for his pleasure. So we've been in the midst of this study through the book of, of Exodus. Today we find ourselves in chapter 31. And in this chapter, uh, we have uh, the Lord describing to us uh, the building of the tabernacle. And he appoints two men, uh, Belzalel and Oholiab, uh, to, to go about overseeing the building of the tabernacle. Now, this is a big deal. To build the tabernacle is a huge deal because not since the Garden of Eden have the people of God had uh, God's presence with them in a more permanent sense until the building of the tabernacle. But let me read for you the first six verses of Exodus chapter 31. It says, The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Belzalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, to work in every craft. Verse 6, And behold, I have appointed with him Oholiab, the son of Hashemach, of the tribe of Dan. And I've given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you. So we read in this text that God has appointed two men to help build the tabernacle. And the first thing I want us to notice from this text is this. That just as he made Aholiab and Belzalel creative, God has made you creative. Now you may be watching this video and thinking to yourself, okay, there's two types of people in the world. There's the creative types and then there's the non-creative types. And maybe you see yourself as a non-creative. But the reality is we are all created in God's image, right? And that's what, that's what Genesis 1, tells us. We're made in the image of God, and, and our God is creative. Therefore, it's actually unbiblical to say that you're not creative. Now, you may not be uh, able to sit down and write a song. You may not be able to uh, uh, produce some type of form of art. But you may be creative in other ways. Maybe it's, it's numbers crunching. Uh, or maybe you're able to uh, help lead a four-year-old's uh, Bible study. Whatever it may be, God makes us creative in different ways. But God just didn't make you creative for creative sake. He made you creative for His glory. He made you creative for His glory. That's the second thing I want us to see. And really, being a Christian... Christianity is all about being human to the glory of God. You know, there's a quote by John Piper in his book, Don't Waste Your Life, that, that I really like. Let me read this for you. It says, if you are God, your work is to create out of nothing. But if you are not God, but you're like God, that is, if you're human, your work is to take what God has made and shape it and make him look good. The point here is that God has made us creative, not just to be creative, not to point glory back to ourselves, but we're to leverage our creative gifts to place the spotlight on Jesus. And that's what we're to do each and, and every day. But let me also tell you this, you know, God, he loves beautiful things. You look at the tabernacle and how precise he was and how he wanted it built and the types of, of wood that he wanted and fabrics. He cares deeply about beauty. And I think he really enjoys when his people, who he made creative, when they make beautiful things, I think he really feels pleasure in that. And that gets to our, our last point from this text I want us to see, is that God made you creative for his glory and for his pleasure. God finds pleasure when you glorify him uh, with your creativity. 
And when we look at this, we, we think about uh, the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, we think of creation. How did God create the world? Well, he did it with his words. He spoke it into his existence, right? You know, when we think of the Israelites, when they were uh, taken out of captivity from uh, Egyptian oppression, how did God go about delivering them? Well, he did it through his power, right? He brought about great miracles. So we see he used his power. Later on in, in the book of Exodus, uh, we see that, that God gives the Israelites the Ten Commandments. And how does he create the Ten Commandments, the, the actual tablets? He, he inscribes it with his finger, it says. But then when we get to the tabernacle, what we see is that he actually uh, decides to use the hands of man to create the tabernacle, God's dwelling place. We might ask, well, why? Why does he want to do this? Because I believe, honestly, he wants his people to wake up every single day saying, God, I know you've given me gifts. You've given me talents. And Lord, I want to use them for your glory and for your pleasure. And I think he loves that. You know, there's a famous uh, Scottish Olympian, Eric Little. Maybe you've heard his story. Uh, There's a movie about him called Chariots of Fire. But Eric Little has a famous quote where he, he says this. He says, God made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. I don't know if God made you fast or not. Uh, but he made you something. He made you creative in, in some way. And I hope today, whatever that is, you'll say to yourself, God made me this. And when I do this, I feel his pleasure. I pray today that you will find joy as you seek to bring God glory and pleasure as you serve him with your gifts. Thank you for watching today's devotionable.